Titus chapter 3. It's important to understand that he's a good father. I'm not going to preach on this today, but he, Jesus came to reveal the father to us. And it's very important because there are many, we know that there is a father issue. Somebody say amen if, if, you know what I, if you know what I'm talking about. There's a father issue and there are many that even maybe in this room that fathers were not present or not present at a level that you needed them present. But here's what's so beautiful about God is that he fills every gap. Amen. Let me say that again. He fills every gap. Hallelujah. And, and Jesus came to reveal the heavenly father who said, I'll never leave you. Whew. I'll never forsake you. I'll never abandon you. I'll be with you even unto the end. Somebody say amen to that. He's a good, look at your neighbor and say, he's a good father. Jesus said, pray this way, our father, which art in heaven. He wants you to know the father. Hallelujah. He says, if you have seen me, you have seen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the father but by me. He's a good father. And I just want to encourage anyone right now that maybe even in this moment that you, you, you struggle with Father's Day in these moments like this, that you have a father that loves you so unconditionally. Hallelujah. That he literally became you so that he could die as you to take away the sins that have gripped you. Hallelujah. He's a good father. And you know what I love about a good father? Is that when, when you only know God as judge, when you mess up, you run from him. But when you have a father, you can mess up and run to him. Woo, y'all missed what I just, y'all missed the whole thing. When you only know God as judge, if you mess up, you run from him. Because you're scared of judgment. But when you understand you have a father and you mess up, you run to him. You're like the prodigal son. You say, listen, if I could just get back to my father's house, I just, I just got to get back. And I love it because the prodigal son, the, the father was sitting there waiting. Hallelujah. And when he saw the son, he said, my son who was dead is now made alive. Hallelujah. And he was able to run and embrace his father. That's what a father does. He's a good father. And somebody needs to know that today. You have a good father. No matter what it's looked like in your life, you have a good father. Hallelujah. And he loves you no matter what. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, he's a good father. Hallelujah. And be seated in heavenly places. Put your hands together one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 3. We're going to read out of Titus chapter 3. I've already sweated. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you all for the amazing gift and gifts. Y'all y'all are amazing. Such an amazing church. Amen. Thank God for the amazing things he's doing. Amen. Let's go to Titus chapter 3. We'll start at verse number 3. And we'll read all the way down to verse number 7. I encourage you to you know, until we get our screens up, bring your, your Bibles uh, or Bible apps, <laughs> whatever you have, your Bibles, your Bible apps, so you can follow along with some of the scriptures as we read them. Amen. Even when we get the screens up, bring, still bring your Bibles. Anybody still got a paper Bible? Anybody here got, we got some, I mean, you got it with you. Yeah, okay, oh, look, okay, let me see who got, who paper Bible saved in the building? <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> Amen. Titus chapter 3. <laughs> Titus chapter 3. Hallelujah. Put them in mind to be subject to the principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceiving, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to preach about this, but this is so interesting. He says, 
he says, speak no evil and no brawlers. He says, do not this, because you were once like that. This is what he says. For we ourselves were sometimes foolish. It's, in other words, he says, I was foolish, done some foolish stuff at some point in my life. Amen. And then he says, he says, um, where at? He said, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. So he said, you were once doing that too. Amen. <laughs> but after that, the kindness of, of the of love of God, our Savior, toward men appeared. Hallelujah. Has anybody experienced the love of God and it changed your life? Notice, like, this whole text is the gospel. He says, you were once that, but what happened is you experienced the kindness and love of God. Not the fear, not the wrath, not the anger of God. You experienced the love of God. It appeared towards you. Not by works of righteousness, verse number five, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Whew, glory to God. We could go home right there. <laughs> according to his mercy, he's, somebody say, thank God for mercy. Ooh. By the washing of regeneration, say regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost, mm. which he shed on us abundantly. Wow. He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So uh, we're still kind of in this Pentecost series and so we've been talking about the Holy Ghost and how the Holy Ghost works with us and our mind. We've gone through so many different um, elements. I want to talk about the, the I want to talk about the DNA of the Holy Ghost. The <laughs> DNA of the Holy Ghost. It's really your DNA should change <laughs> when you get born again. But we're gonna get there. There are five stages of, of believers, or every believer deals with these five stages, goes through these five stages. Some of them are simultaneous, and some of them are a process, but number one is the stage of salvation. So if when you accept the sacrifice of Jesus, what we just talked about in Titus, that his mercy saved us, his grace saved us, when you, it, when you receive that, then you now can say, I am saved. You are, you are saved, completely saved. It doesn't matter what your life looks like or what you have done or what you even do, you are saved. Amen. You, you are saved. You are saved, and no one can take that salvation from you. So I believe in eternal security because I'm, I, we've been eternally insecure for so long. And so um, um, uh, salvation, he saves us. Number two is sanctification. He sanctifies us, meaning that he sets us apart. When you have been sanctified, you have been set apart for his holy use. Woo! You, this is why you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, because you are sanctified. You are not like everything else when you come into the kingdom. Remember that. Always remember, you're not like everything else. You are sanctified. Amen. Sanctified is not a dress code. Sanctified is a position. Sanctified, I'm going to say that again. That guy, sanctified is not a dress code. It is a position. It is a position. So you are sanctified. And then you are, number three, justified. Justified is a process of being made not guilty. You are justified. You are not guilty. Look at your neighbor and say, you are not guilty. Ooh, glory to God. You are not guilty. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what they keep calling you. You are not guilty. Hallelujah. You are justified. I heard a preacher years ago say justified. How he said it is justified. Never done it before. <laughs> justified. You are justified. And number four, you are glorified or the glorification. Glorified or glorification means to add worth or value. So now that you are in the kingdom, he has glorified you. He has added value to your life. Glory to God. And the glorification is twofold because we are glorified in this life where he adds value and restores our worth. But then we also, the Bible says that we will receive a glorified body. Are you with me? And so that's the glorification. We have been glorified. Look at your neighbor and say, you're, you're already glorified. Come on. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You have worth. You have more worth than you can even imagine. You have so much worth and so much value. And if we ever learn the, what I call value expression, we can actually change the game in our life, in our families, when we really understand how valuable we are. I'm going to stop there for just a moment. When we understand how valuable you are, you're very intentional about what you do and how you do what you do. Because you understand your value. 
Hallelujah. When you know something has value, you take care of it different. I don't, are y'all with me? I'm telling you, when you, when you have a car that you believe is valuable, you will, go, you will go three blocks around the corner to stay out of the mud because you think it's valuable. Are, are y'all with me in here? That's, that's when you get the new car, you know, y'all. It's, it's valuable. You, you know, so you've been glorified. And number five, number five is regeneration. You've been regenerated, regenerated. You've been regenerated. But, but, but we got to understand that the, the, the justification is, is a mindset shift. You're, it's done. All, let, let me go back. All of these are mindset shifts. So you have to believe that you are saved. Not based on what you've done. You have to believe he saved me. No matter what you feel, you believe he saved me. Somebody say amen to that. You got to believe that you are sanctified. You got to believe you are set apart. You got to believe that you are not guilty because if not, you will live your life as if you are guilty. And you will have shame. You'll have condemnation. You'll live in embarrassment. You'll live in all those places until you know I am not guilty. Glorifying, you got to know your value. But the regeneration process is, is, it is a process that we have to go through um, in order to really walk in this level of regeneration. One of the grave mistakes that the church has made is thinking, watch this, behavior modification is the same as regeneration. Let me say that again. One of the grave mistakes, the grave mistakes that the church has made is to believe that behavior modification is the same as regeneration. And so this is why we have focused so much on changing or modifying the behavior of a person because we think it's regeneration. But the truth is behavior modification and regeneration are really two separate things. <laughs> <laughs> because you can change your behavior but never be regenerated. I need a church in here. You, you can change your behavior. You can, you, can go, you can go to AA and stop drinking but never be regenerated. Talk to me in here. You can make a, you, you don't have to, watch this, this is going to mess y'all up. You don't have to be saved to change your behavior. Oh, okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this over here. You don't have to be saved to change your behavior. Uh, <laughs> I know a lot of unsaved people who reject Jesus, but they will tell me I stopped doing this and I stopped doing that. I don't do that no more. I'm faithful to my, my family. I, do, I, I go to work. I do the thing. I just go work, come home. I'm good to my, my wife. And, and, and they ain't saved, but their behavior sometimes is better than the behavior of folks in the church. <laughs> but behavior modification is not regeneration. <sighs> Hallelujah. Are y'all still with me? So in order to understand regeneration, we have to understand one of the words within re regeneration, and that is gene. <laughs> Got to understand the genes. G-E-N-E-S. Not the genes you're wearing. Genes. You understand the function of genes because this is really where we get into the regeneration. <laughs> genes are the functional and physical unit of heredity passed from parent to offspring. Genes are pieces of DNA. Somebody say DNA. And most genes contain, watch this, information for making specific protein. So in other words, the genes are what is passed down from generation to generation. Oh, you're with me. Uh -huh. So behavior modification doesn't necessarily break what has been passed down from generation to generation. Case in point, that you can have one person that is an alcoholic in one generation, the next generation doesn't, is not an alcoholic, but then the next generation picks up where the other generation was. Why? <laughs> because the behavior changed, but the generation didn't change. 
There was not a regening. Ah, good God Almighty. There was not a regening that took place that was that gave the ability for the next generation to function at a higher level. I'm teaching good. Are y'all in here? Uh huh. So the goal is the Bible says this that the Bible says that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Are you with me? Now I believe that inheritance has to do with money. It has to do with money, but not just money. Talk to me in here. It has to do with money, but not just money. Come on. In other words, it is that whenever you're passing something to the next generation, it has to be bigger than stuff. Did y'all hear? Come on, talk to me. It has to be bigger than stuff. Somebody shout, it has to be bigger. Now, you, you need to pass stuff, get insurance. I'm still preaching. I'm still, I'm still spiritual, right? Get insurance. We don't want to go fund me. Come on, get insurance. Now, but listen, y'all got quiet right there. Why, why y'all get quiet? But, but there, y'all got real quiet. But there's more that you need to pass on so you can regene the next generation. Ah, good God Almighty. Are you good? At, are, you, are you with me? So that means you stopping something is not enough. You changing your behavior is not enough. There, there has to be somebody say regeneration. Say it again. Say regeneration. Uh huh. Yeah. So watch this. Our genes carry information that is passed from one generation to the next. Our genes carry what? T talk to me. Carry what? Carry information from one generation to the next. So your gene pool, your DNA is full of information. Hallelujah. And that information is passed through the gene pool. Am I teaching too much? Are you here? Are y'all with me? It is passed through the gene pool. That information is passed through from one person to the next person. So I'm going to submit something to you. That most of what you call generational curses is nothing more than bad, bad information. Let me say it again. Most of what we call generational curses is nothing more than bad information. Poverty is not a generational curse. It's bad information. Ah, good God Almighty. It's bad information passed down. Are you with me? Can I go? I'm going to mess with y'all. Y'all ain't going to say amen on this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh -huh. A lot of sickness is not generational curse. It's bad information about eating. Y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't ready. Yeah, yeah. That heart disease wasn't a bad, that, that wasn't a curse. It was bad information about eating all that fried foods and all that grease and all that. Y'all, y'all. Yeah. I, I got my crew right here. Y'all talk to me. <laughs> talk to me in here. High blood pressure and all that stuff. It's just bad information. It's not a curse. A lot of your relational issues is not a curse on your relationships. It's still you've been given bad information concerning relationships. And so that information has been passed from generation to generation to generation. How your mama thought men were, that's how you think men were. How your daddy thought looked at women, that's how you look at women. Because of the information that was passed from generation to generation. So it's not about breaking the curse, it's about changing the information. Are y'all still with me? Are y'all still with me? Somebody shout, you got to change the information. Come on, t tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to change the information. Glory to God. A lot of your healing will come by new information. A lot of your peace will come by new information. A lot of your joy will come when not by new information. A lot of your depression issues will be healed with new information. The moment you get better information, it'll change everything else that's going on in your life. It'll change it. I'm telling you, it's just an information issue. I know, I know if you don't know how money works, you have bad information. Y'all keep shouting. <laughs> if you don't know how money works, you have bad information. This is why you go through cycles of being broke. Because you were informed that money was to spend. The purpose of money is not spending. 
The purpose of money is circulation. Did I? That's why it's a current currency. Okay. And so if you, are y'all still with me? Are we still good? If you have bad information, that is what's creating the cycles in your life. This is why men, we have, this is why men, hear me men, it's Father's Day. Listen, this is why our kids need to see us worship. They got to see us do more than watch basketball and football. Oh, gosh. They, they got to see more than They got to see us praying. They, they got to see us in worship. They got to see us in church. They got to see us loving the Lord and loving our families. Are you here? Because we're passing information on to them. I need three people to get excited about what I'm talking about. We're passing information. It is information that's passed. So information is passed through the gene pool. They need to see you in worship. The m- mothers, they need to see you praying. They need to see, oh, glory to God. They need to know. They need to hear you quoting scripture and, and saying that God is good. They need to hear it. Are you with me? Because it's information that's being passed from generation to generation. I, I'm doing what I do because of information that I saw in the home. Y- y'all talk to me. I watched my daddy walk through the house talking about, and God is good. I heard, that was his hood. I heard in one of these old days, walking through the house, it was information, ah, goodness, that was being passed on, and now that information is being cultivated. Because, of watch, you always have multiple forms of information being passed to you. And the environment you get in would determine what information is cultivated. Did y'all hear me? It, the environment you're in would determine the information that is cultivated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. This is why the enemy wants to keep you ignorant of the things of God. The people perish because of the lack of knowledge. They do not perish because the devil has power. They perish because they don't know. I'm preaching in here. Are y'all with me? They don't perish because of all the attacks of the enemy. Because the devil's coming from the right. And the devil's coming from the left. And the devil's coming this way. And the spirit of Python is trying to choke you. And the this line of Leviathan. No! It's bad information is the issue. So this is why, hallelujah, he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light (laughs) out of ignorance bad information unto the marvelous revelation and information of the kingdom of God somebody say amen to this look at your neighbor and say your information has to change Woo! come on tell them again I don't think they heard you tell them again your information has to change <laughs> and this is the problem with the modern church that, that we have had is that we are great and we love spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. Aaron, we love spiritual gifts. We love shouting and praising, and I do too. We just did that. I love it. We love the power of the Holy Ghost. Ooh, hallelujah. The power. Power. You know, you got to really get power. We love the power of the Holy Ghost. We love all the stuff the Holy Ghost can do, but we don't understand that he doesn't just want to do that. He wants to give you new information. <laughs> and sometimes we don't sit down long enough so that he can inform us. Somebody, oh, glory to God. Are you with me? Sometimes we don't stop long enough so he can inform us because he wants to re-what? Generate us. It's to regenerate us. So let's keep going. Are y'all still, y'all still here? Let's keep going. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse number 25. These things I have spoken to you while I was with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, watch this, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Back up. Let's go back. Because most of the time we talk about the Holy Ghost, we talk about when he comes, you will speak in tongues. 
When he comes, you have the power to prophesy. When he comes, you might shake on the floor and fall out. Send your power. Send your power. Send your power. But how many times have we had somebody get up and pray, teach me. Give me instruction. Talk to me in here. I need you to teach me something. Because the truth is, the teaching part of it is actually the greater level than even the other part of it. Talk to me in here. I need you to, somebody say, I need you to teach me, Holy Ghost. Watch, so teach, it's, it's the word didesco in the Greek. It means to instruct. So he wants to instruct you. He wants to instruct you. He wants to impart into you. Watch this. He wants to instill doctrine. What is doctrine? Doctrine is a teaching. It's a belief system. He wants to instill doctrine into you. He wants to explain to you. Do you know that Holy, the Holy Spirit will explain some things in your life? Is there, is there anybody that's ever been in a place in your life and you didn't know what was happening and Holy Spirit explained it to you? Glory to God. And sometimes we say, I don't know how I knew that. I know how you knew that. <laughs> His name is Holy Ghost. And he started explaining to you the answers that you needed to get through whatever you're going through. And I believe that if we can just submit to the Holy Ghost a whole lot more, there's a whole lot of things we'll get through a whole lot faster. There's a whole lot of problems we'll solve a whole lot faster if we would get off of social media and stop asking the questions on Facebook and asking them to give you answers and start saying, Holy Ghost, I need you. I need your answers. Holy Ghost, I need you to explain. I need you, one word, expound on this, God. I need you to show me what I need to do here. Instruct me. Teach me. I don't have answers right now. Teach me what I need to know. Teach, show me where I need to go. Lead me and guide me into all truth. I need to know reality. I need to know truth right now. I need somebody in here that you have been in a place in your life that it looked real foggy. It looked real dark. But the Holy Ghost began to shed light and show you exact. He'll show you. He'll teach you how to love your wife. He'll teach you how to raise your kids. Are y'all in here? He'll teach you what you need to do with your supervisor. He'll teach you how to run your business. He's a God and a spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things that you need to know to get you through your life don't limit him to your shout bring him into your life let me say it one more time don't limit him to your shout bring him into your life hallelujah 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 there's so many of us that we leave Sunday morning and we leave him here. Uh huh. But you got to get to a point that you, when you walk on the job, you say, we going in. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> you ready? Let's go. We can ready to go have a meeting. You ready? Let's go. Are you in here today? You got to get to a place in your life that he becomes your most important confidant. He becomes your biggest counselor. He becomes the person that you talk to the most late in the midnight hour. I know who I can call on when won't nobody else answer the phone. I know who I can call on. And he always has some instruction and some teaching to give me some new information. So Jesus said, know the truth, Woo. and the truth will make you free. Uh, not set you free, it will make you free. Oh, glory to God. In other words, you're not just set free, because if you're just set free, you can always go back into bondage. Let me say it one more time. If you're set free, you can always go back into bondage. So the text is not set free, it's make free. He makes you free, because when he makes you free, can't nothing bound you up again. I have been made free by the knowledge that I have. When I get the right information, I am made free free 
and free indeed. That's the, in, the only thing the enemy can do to you is stop you from knowing. So if he can keep you enticed ah, by environments that keep you ignorant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got that. <laughs> Let me say. If he can keep you enticed by environments that make you ignorant, keep you ignorant, that's the playing field of the enemy. And the enemy will make you think you have knowledge. That's what the Bible says. They were ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge. Ah, God Almighty. This is... <laughs> In other words, you can learn a lot from a system, but never come into the knowledge that sets you free. Did y'all hear what I just said in this building? You can learn from a system that keeps, you keep learning and learning and increasing and learning, but never come into the knowledge that sets you free. But there is, oh God, there is a place in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost, where he says, if you just come to this place, I will break you free from all that bad information that you received so that we can cultivate the good information that will cause your life to flourish. That's why the Bible says, do not sit in the council of the ungodly or the seat of scorners. Are you with me? He's saying, get out of those environments that have ungodly counsel, that don't know how to tap into the Holy Ghost, into the Holy Spirit. Get out of those environments and find yourself in an environment where you can get planted like the tree by the rivers of water that in every single season of your life, you can bear fruit. Every season of your life, your leaves will be green. I need about 50 people to shout like you know that God God wants you to be somewhere where you will flourish. One more time, open your mouth and shout right there. I said, well, one more time. We're about to go one more time. Shout up in here because I'm telling you, God is ready to shift your environment. He's ready for you to shift your environment so that he can flourish your life like he desires to flourish your life. He wants to bring you higher. He wants to take you to greater. He wants you to have more. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to win. But there are certain places that cultivate your ignorance and you got to get out of that darkness huh? into the mud. Marvelous light. I don't want to talk to people that's always talking about broke and talking about no money and I can't do it and I can't make it and I can't get there and I can't and you know they ain't paying nothing and you know that no, 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 I don't want to hear you I don't want to hear that I want to hear that because God has something big for me he said I'm blessed when I come I'm blessed when I go I'm blessed in the field I'm blessed in the city I'm blessed I need some blessed people in here I'm the head and not the tail I'm above and not beneath he's my God he said I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health I got to get around people People with new information that I can elevate in my life. Ooh. Somebody shout, give me new information, Holy Spirit. Come on. <laughs> Let me give you one more and we're going to go. <laughs> give me one more. You're currently living at the level of your information. You, <laughs> you're currently living at the level of your information. I'm living at the level of my information. It don't, it don't matter who you are, you're living at the level of your information. <laughs> the reason you don't, you're not making more money is because you don't have the right information. Golly, are y'all here? Are you with me? The reason the relationships are not better is because you don't have the right information. Are you, are you in here? 
<laughs> there's a great, there's a higher level of information. If I want to go higher, I have to have a higher level of information. Somebody say amen to this. That's why I always say, you know, they, they teach you all this stuff in the church. Every new level, there's a new devil. No, there's not. There is no new devil. Where do you get a new devil from? The devil is not reproductive. It cannot multiply. It cannot get greater. But for every new level, there's a new requirement for new information. <laughs> and you think it's a devil, but it's not a devil. It's an attack of ignorance. Are y'all with me? This is, why, this, is why, this is why you can give somebody, they can win the lottery and win multiple millions of dollars. And within a year and sometimes less, they, as a matter of fact, they worse than when they got the money. Because they got new money without new information. <laughs> Are you with me? Uh, they got new money without new information. They, they, they still have information at a poverty level. So if you give somebody with poverty information a million dollars, they're going to make sure that million dollars becomes poverty. This is, are, are you When you get married, you have to have new information. You can't have single information if you're married. You can't keep going to singles events. You're married. Your information, is this okay? Are y'all in here? Your information has to change. If not, you, you get married and you, uh, and that marriage just falls apart because you're still living like you're single. Thinking like you're single. Acting like you're single. Y'all don't, don't stop shouting. So for every new level, you need new information. Stop rebuking the devil and start reading a book. I don't think they're ready, y'all. Yeah, y'all got to stop, stop rebuking the devil. And you can get on YouTube and get a whole bunch of information for free. Stop rebuking the devil and start investing in classes. See, is this too, this is not spiritual enough, is it? Is it it's okay? Because you rebuking the devil, you sweating, you hollering, your voice is hurting, you're tired, you're worn out, you done cast out every devil in, in every region. And you get out of your war and walk right back into your darkness. So let me submit this, Holy Spirit, I hear you. Let me submit this. The real spiritual warfare is ignorance versus information. Ah, that's what it is. Ooh, glory to God. Oh, I need somebody to invite me to a warfare conference. The real spiritual warfare. <laughs> yeah. The real spiritual warfare is ignorance versus information. Because the devil struggles with informed people. Oh, Ooh, glory to God. Hey, 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 we just, we, we just celebrated the Juneteenth, Juneteenth. Y'all know what Juneteenth was about, right? Yeah. That America had been set free from slavery. <laughs> but Texas didn't know. So Texas was still functioning like slaves when the rest of the nation had been free. The only reason they were functioning like slaves is because they didn't have the information. Good God Almighty. So they wanted to do everything they could to keep that information away from them. Because they knew the moment they got the right information, they can walk out of the bonds of slavery. Good God Almighty. And what I'm telling you is the enemy is the same way. You've been set free. It's a finished work. Under grace, God's got you covered. And the enemy said, don't let them know that. Don't let them know that. Don't let them know that the son has made them free. Don't let them know that they got this kind of liberty. Don't let them know they can be free from sin. Don't let them know that. 
Woo! Glory to God. But I came to let somebody know. I, ah, good God Almighty. That today is your emancipation proclamation. Hey, glory to God. That you have been set free. And whomever the Son makes free. I'll say it again. Is free indeed. Oh, Pastor Jay, I got to say like Myron. Myron said it like this. It's not your emancipation, it's your emancipation. In other words, your mind <laughs> is being set free. Your mind is being emancipated. Your mind is being let go. Your mind is being loose. Your thought patterns are being loose. I need somebody to shout like you're getting some information that's about to change everything in your bloodline. Open your mouth. It's my emancipation. <laughs> Watch. Let's go home right here. <laughs> Y'all sit down. We're going home. Hey. 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 You're just one revelation away from the best days of your life. Whew, good God Almighty. First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. 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 It's something about when your mind starts getting set free. Whew, it's something about when you realize that, the, that these chains have been on my mind. Uh, hallelujah. And the church been rebuking chains off of my life, but not off of my mind. And it's the, that's the reason I've been in the place that I've been in. That's the reason it's been 20 years I'm going through the same stuff. 10 years, same stuff. 5 years, same stuff. And I come to the altar every day to get rid of it. But it seems like it keeps coming back. It's because we got to get to the mind. We got to emancipate the mind. We got to get that mind free. I need somebody in here. We got to get that mind whole. Woo, somebody shall heal my mind, Jesus. Heal. Come on, I just come on. Heal my mind. Woo. You're living at the level of your, your level of your information. And then let me say this before I move on. And then when you get the information, you have to have application. <laughs> that part. Did you hear me? You're living at the level of your information, but when you get the information, you have to have application. This is why the Bible says, don't just be hearers, but be... Do, come, talk to me. Don't just be hearers, be what? So he said, don't just hear the information, do the information. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Little baby, she playing for me. Amen. <laughs> don't don't just be hearers, be what? Because if you hear the word and don't do it, watch what it says. He says, it's like you being a, a person that looks in the mirror and sees who you are and walks away and forgets who you are. In other words, he says, if you hear it and don't do it, you really ain't got identity for it. Hey, hey, did you hear y'all? <laughs> I'll say it again. <laughs> if you hear it and don't do it, that means you don't have identity for it. Because hearers are looking in the mirror. They see who they are. This is, my, this is the possibility. This is who I can be. This is where I can go. This is what can happen. This is how I can live. And they walk out and don't do it. They forget their identity. They forget the new level they just saw. Oh, God. They forget the greater they just saw. They, they forget the higher that they just saw. That when you looked in the mirror, you saw the greatness. You saw what God has for you. You saw the blessed person. You saw the righteousness of God. You saw who he wanted you to be. And you walked away and forgot who you are. First Peter. First Peter, I'm just teaching. First Peter, <laughs> chapter 1, verse number 22. We're going to leave with this scripture. <laughs> Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, hallelujah, through the spirit, 
in sincere love of the brethren. Love one another fervently with a pure heart. We can stop right there and preach a whole other message just right there. So I'm going to say it again. Love one another fervently with a pure heart. Watch verse number 23. Being, having been born again. Whoo, hallelujah. Not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Let me stop right there. I'll come back. Being, been, having been born again, not of corruptible seed. Stop right there. Let me read it again. Y'all read that too fast. Being, have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. So seed in scripture is the same as the genes. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> That's why the Bible talks about the seed of Abraham. The seed of Jacob. The seed. Are y'all with me? Of Jesse. The seed. Because seed in scripture is how they define your genes. So he says that when you are born again, something happens in your DNA structure. Oh, y'all, I'm going to have to come down here to teach this because y'all. He said, when you are born again, because if you don't know this stuff, the enemy don't want us to know this and we don't, we don't function properly. When you're born again, there's something that happens in your DNA structure. Whew, glory to God. And and he's saying that when you were born the first time, the seed was corrupt. So it, it really is it, really irrelevant. I know, I know, listen to me. It's really irrelevant what happened in your family. When you get born again, the DNA structure shifts. Talk to me in here. And so, really, I told you, you're not cursed because of your DNA that was corrupt when you were born into it. Because now you have a new seed Whew. that did not come from your daddy and your mom and them and all of them folks. Are you here? You have a new seed. Because you are born again. Born again is the word genos on a thon. It means genos is the genealogy, the gene pool, the generation, genos. So when it says you're born again, it says you have been gened, on a thon, higher. You have been gened from a higher place. I don't think y'all heard what I said. You have been gened from a higher place. Glory to God. So now your gene pool has now shifted from being subject to what has happened in the earth. Well, I, I need y'all to see me. <laughs> you are no longer subject to what has happened through your bloodline. This is why I can confidently say cancer may have ran in your bloodline until it ran into you. Which means it, it don't have right to enter into your body. Because you've been re I need a hey. If it shows up, you say, nope, I've been re -gened. This is not a part of my life. Are, are y'all in here today? This does not belong to me because I'm gene from a higher place. You got to be born. Are y'all with me? So you can be born any kind of way you want to be born. It doesn't matter. Because when you're regened, when you're regened, it, it, what you were born into doesn't matter. 
because now you're born into something else. Nicodemus was confused. Jesus says, Nicodemus, here's the deal. You got, in order for you to see the kingdom, you got to be born again. Nicodemus said, wait, 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 wait. How can I, grown as I am, go back into the mother's womb? <laughs> Watch. Because that is a symbol of behavior modification. So Nicodemus said, so you mean I got to go back in there? And start all over and come back out and act different? He said, no, 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 no. You're thinking, you're thinking incorrectly. You can't do this by going back in the mother's womb. Because the born again process, oh God, happens by spirit and water. Are you with me? Spirit, water actually represents the word. So spirit and word. Word represents information. So spirit and information. So if I'm going to be born again, hallelujah, glory to God, I'm born again by coming into the spirit of God and receiving the new information of God. And then it causes a regeneration to happen in my life. Are y'all still with me? So what most of us, we, we've just thought. We just thought that I got saved, and that's it. But once you get saved, you're saved. You're righteous. You're holy. You're everything that he called you to be. But there must be a regening. Hallelujah. Mm. So I'll submit this to you. There's some people that maybe got saved but not born again. How in the world can you be saved and not born again? The Bible makes it clear to two different experiences. <laughs> you get saved and you come into the kingdom by the born again process. Watch. Can I keep going a little bit more? Y'all okay? Which means that you can come in the building and say, I'm in the building, but never come in this room. You can come, hold on, you can come, listen, you can come in the hallway. John, you can come in the hallway. You know, you come in the hallway and come to the door. Oh, y'all gonna get this in a minute. You can come to the door and you can admire the door. Oh, this door, oh, look at the door. Ooh. It's brown. <laughs> Got these handles that are brass on them or whatever color those things are. Ooh, look how that door opens up. Ooh, oh, the door, the door. Ooh. I love to give a story. Come on. Oh, yeah. The door. Oh, I love the door. You can bow at the door. Oh, the door. Oh, door bless me. Door touch me. Door heal me. And the door said, I'm the way. <laughs> The door saying, I'm the gate. <laughs> Whoever enters in, that's what the Bible says. Whoever enters into the gate shall find pasture. Are you in here today? So, so many people that have came to the door, but not entered into the door. And because of that, I enter the door. I come to the door. Nothing changes in my life. But at some point, you got to say, I want to be born again. I'm going to enter into the door and allow this new information to regenerate and to change my life for the rest of my life. Can I get about 50 people to shout like... Oh, hallelujah. Nicodemus was a keeper of the law. Nicodemus was under the system. Nicodemus had the religious system down, but he only walked to the door. And Jesus said, I need you to come in. I need you to be born again. I need you to come through the door so you can see the kingdom because there's so much more for you than this right here. I came to prophesy to somebody that there's so much more to life than what you've been seeing. And God is saying, I'm opening the door and I need you to walk in the 
mentor and get this new information so your life can elevate and you can see all the great and marvelous things that I have in store for you. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, the door is open. Come on in. Come on in. Come on, come on. Find somebody and tell them the door is open. Come on in. Come on, come on in. Come on in. The door is open. Come on in. I need y'all to talk to somebody. Tell them the door is open. Come on in. The door is open for your next level of life. Come on in. The door is open for your higher version of yourself. Come on in. The door is open for your deliverance. Come on in. The door is open for your freedom. Come on in. The door is open. The door is open. He's ready to regene you and regenerate you and to shift you and to convert you and to change your life. This is the regeneration process. It's what it means to be regened. <laughs> there are many that have been in church for many years, but never been regenerated. And in that text, that same text in Peter, it goes on to say, watch this, it says, for this is the gospel that we preached unto you. Hallelujah. He said this new seed that's, that's not corrupt comes from the preaching of the gospel. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is the reason why that people can get saved and still live the same way. Y'all want to know that this is the reason why people can get saved and live the same way. Because you've got to be born again. you got to be regened. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your identity has to shift. It's a principle. Every financial guru I know. They say you'll never, you'll never, you'll never become a millionaire until you become a millionaire. Let, let me say it again slow, because y'all gonna catch it. Every, every one of them, everyone I know, they say you never become a millionaire until you become a millionaire. So oftentimes in church, we're trying to do something we haven't become. We're trying to go somewhere we haven't become. We're trying to elevate to a place we haven't become. And we got distracted by titles. Because we thought titles were the same as becoming. Yeah, yeah we got distracted with titles. We thought that was the same as becoming. And titles and becoming are two totally different things. You can be a bishop and never become. You can have the title of bishop and never become. The title of pastor and never become. Yeah. Title of director and never become. Are y'all still with me? I'm telling you why people fall so much. And you'd be like, how are you living like that and you still up doing that? It's because you took on, a, they took on a title but never became So it's not their fault. <laughs> they're just doing what they, they're just doing who they are. <laughs> Let me, <laughs> they're just doing who they are. So I've come to the conclusion that if there's going to be change, there has to be a shift or a regeneration of the church. Mm. Not just the world. The world, we already know that. There needs to be a regeneration of the church. The church has to regene. Whew. We can take our position and dominion in the earth again. Because we've become. Hallelujah. Y'all know this. Y'all know this. Uh, let me just remind you. You've heard me say it millions of times. Let me remind you. The Bible says if any man. Say it. If any man. 
If any man. He didn't say do in Christ. Be in Christ. Hallelujah. So, people, you know, I'm just, this is just what I feel. I'm just doing what I feel. You're right. This, this is what you feel because that's who you are. This is just, you're right. This is just who I am. Exactly. I'm glad you nailed it. Exactly who you are. But that is not who you have to stay. Are you with me? The only reason, financial, the only reason I have the money I have is because of who I am. If I want the next level of money, I have to change who I am. So if I'm, if I'm in a certain place financially here, I got to be regenerated. So that I can live at the next financial level here. Can, can I, can, are y'all with me? I can tell you, because listen, I can tell you, y'all know this. I'm in rooms with multiple millionaires all the time. And I started questioning, God, I'm in these rooms all the time. Why? And I'm not making a million dollars a day and doing what they're doing and all this stuff. And I was just mad. I was mad one day. I was mad. Like, I'm shaking hands with them. I'm riding the car. I'm going to their houses and I'm on the yachts with them, all this kind of stuff. Why ain't I doing it? I said, because that's not who you are yet. I said, don't say that to me. He said, you've been around it, but not become it. So I have to, can I talk about me? So I have to keep changing the information so that I can have a complete regeneration. Hallelujah. I, I hope I'm helping somebody. Woo. Hallelujah. If you keep going through bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship, you have to change the information concerning relationships so that you become the person that can sustain a healthy relationship. If you have church bad church experience after bad church experience after bad church experience after bad church experience after bad church it ain't no good churches out there not true that's not true not necessarily it could be that you haven't become the person that you need to become to have a healthy relationship inside of community That's why you go to the next place and you say, all oh, these people the same way. I'm going somewhere else. You go over there. Oh, here they go again. Same way. Same thing. Maybe the people don't need to change. Is this too much? Are we st are just okay? Okay. It, it could be. I'm just saying it could be. It just could be. That the people don't need to change. <laughs> she said it. I didn't say it. She said it. Drama all everywhere, everywhere I go, drama. It's always drama. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe the issue is you have to change. Hallelujah. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it just to preach you. I'm talking, I'm talking to myself. Are y'all with me? Because there were some situations I keep finding myself. In. Like, why do these people, why do people keep coming in my life? I get caught up with this kind of attitude kind of thing. They keep showing up. Jobs, business, what, the business, they keep showing up. Wherever, church. <laughs> and then I had to be honest with me. Maybe there's something I am. Oh, y'all y'all not, not ready for this kind of talk. Maybe there's something that I am that keeps attracting that kind of thing. So if I want to fix that, I got to fix me. 
So I need to have a regeneration so that I don't keep attracting the same issue and problem. Are y'all with me in here? The whole, the whole, our whole church has to become something different. If we want to keep attracting the, what, what God has called us and go to the nations, and go, you, the, the whole church has to become something different. Are you with me? Are, are, we, are y'all in here? We, ha- we collectively has to have to become a different church that can attract the thing that we desire. Are y'all with me? There are some attitudes and some stuff that you've always been that you don't need to be no more. Jim Rohn says, how you do anything is how you do everything. So that's why a lot of your relationships mirror. Oh, man, this is... T- <laughs> you mirror relationships. So I'm always offended over here, and I'm always offended over here, and I'm always offended over here. Because I do the same thing in every circle. Whew. So therefore, I have to be re generated so I want my peace I gotta be regenerated I want my joy I've gotta be regenerated I'm tired of chaos I gotta be regenerated I'm tired of being hurt I gotta be regenerated ah, yeah yeah I gotta be regenerated and the Holy Ghost wants to redeem you. I'm telling you, our lives, our lives, I'm talking to myself, our lives will be a whole lot better if we just said, redeem me. Show me the information I need to redeem my life. I'm ready to go to I'm ready to go higher regene me I'm tired of going through these cycles regene me I'm tired of having these ups and downs regene me Whew. I'm tired of these sleepless nights and this anxiety regene me I'm tired of feeling like I'm always in a place of being rejected regene me hallelujah glory to God hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. I'm tired of feeling like everybody's against me. Reaching me. Reaching me, God. Reaching me. Reaching me. I need to be regenerated. I'm ready for what you have for me. So I'm ready to become the thing I need to become, the person I need to become to get what you have for me. Ah. Hallelujah you'll start attracting the the thing for the next level. Father God, we honor you. (laughs) We give you the highest praise and glory, God. Thank you for saving us. Hallelujah. Thank you for sanctifying us. Thank you for justifying us. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, God, for glorifying us. And thank you, Father God, that you're regening us. You're regenerating us, God. Woo, hallelujah. We're not only saved, but we're transforming. We're not only justified, but we're transforming. We're changing into who you've created us to be. We're becoming, we're becoming more like your image, more like the image of your dear son. We're gravitating to your image. We're becoming who you are designing us to be. You are the potter, we are the clay. Woo. Mold us, God. Hallelujah. Mold us, God. Mold this church, God. You know what this church needs to become in order to reach the nations, in order to preach this gospel throughout the world. You know what we need to become? Mold us. Make us who we need to be. 
Make me as a leader who I need to be, Father God. Mold me. Shift me, God. Prune me, Father God. Whatever you got to do, God, just begin to design who you need me to be. Woo, hallelujah. Just lift your hands and worship. Make me over again. Make me over again. Yeah. Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. Come on, just lift your hands and let them remake you. Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. Come on, come on. Make me over again. Lord, make me over, say, come on. Lord, make me over. Make me Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. Sing it. Come on. Lord, make me over. Make me Lord, make me over. 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 Stay right there. Make me over. Say it like that. Make me over. Come on, lift your hands and let them just begin to form you. Come on and make me over. Woo. Come on, stay right there. Woo. I want to be made new, Lord. Make me over. Make me over again. You can transform my heart. Make me over. Over again. I'm tired. 
I dare you to worship for 60 more seconds, please. Come on, I dare you. Come on. Woo! I need you. I need you. I surrender my mind. Hey, hey, hey. I surrender my heart. I surrender my mind. Come on, 30 more seconds. I need you to make me. I want healthy relationships. Make me over. No more, make me. I'm ready to walk in freedom. Make me over. Depression, you can't have me. He's making me over. Hey, Shabbate. Depression, you can't have me. He's making me over. I feel that. Hey, depression, you can't have me. He's making me over. Stress, you can't have me. He's making me over. Worry, you can't have me. He's making me over. Loneliness, you can't have me. He's making me over. Rejection, you can't have me. He's making me over. Father God, we thank you. Today is an extreme makeover. <laughs> Today is an extreme makeover. We're born again. We've been reaching from another place. Whew. I come against every attack on the mind right now that tries to make, your, make you think that your life will never change. I break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah. Break it off of you right now. Every attack on your emotions. That I, I see I see like someone's emotions, maybe multiple people, it's like literally smothering you. It's like trying to pull you down and like literally smother you. that's you I want you to come and you just feel that way it's emotionally it's like it's been trying to it's been a weight trying to pull me down I want you to come right here it's like these and it's almost like a fight it's almost like a fight like you know you need you know that you want to be here but these emotions keep trying to pull you God's about to lift this burden off of you, this heaviness, almost like it's been trying to crush you. Oh yeah. And the consuming fire of the Holy Ghost is about to literally consume those things. In Jesus' name, do it, God. Do, yep. Yep. Receive it. Yep. Father God, right now, do it now, God. Ah. Torment has to go. Uh -huh. The weight of glory. Oh, ah, the weight of glory. Let's rest in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm coming 
after that, coming after that thing that's trying to cause you to stay in warfare, I'm coming after it now. And I'm arresting it now. In Jesus' name. Your emotions got to get set free. Your joy has to get set free right now. Oh yeah, I speak to your joy. There's joy on the inside of you that's been locked up and I speak to that joy right now. Uh-huh. I speak to that joy right now. Woo. And I say joy come forth. Yep, yeah. Joy come forth. Joy come, oh yeah. Oh yes, joy come forth. Make me over. Make me over. 
mind, Lord. Make me Take my mind. He's doing a regening in this building. He's doing a regening right now. Terry, I sever every attack on your family right now. Break it. Thank you, Bob. And even what was going to try to come. I just saw something in the spirit. And right now we sever that, sever that, yeah. and we declare no weapon formed. No weapon. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Ha. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Mm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wow. Jesus. We we block everything that would try to come. Right now. In the name of Jesus. God is healing the emotions right now. Hallelujah. Come on. There's joy getting ready to come out of you. There's a new level of joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Uriah, where you went, joy is coming. Come on. This is your this is your time to walk in your joy. Walk in your joy. Let, let his joy fill you. Let his joy fill you. Let his joy fill you. Thank you, Father. My God. Whatever tries to come, whenever a filling tries to come that's opposite of that, say, no, I got the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Your identity is shifting to joy. Yeah, your identity is shifting to joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father yeah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, just lift your hands. Yes, God. And just worship the Lord. For about 30 seconds. God. God has done something amazing in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Make sure you're writing, when you write um, about, when you write in the mornings, if you write, if, if you don't, you should start. But write I am statements and begin to write the I am that you want to be. So whatever that, this is the instruction, the I am statement. Some of y'all heard a teaching on this before. Write the I am that you want to be. I am wealthy. I am whatever it is. Your I am, I am healed. I am whatever. Start writing that. Is there a regeneration taking place? You got you're you're becoming, you have to become something different. And you gotta reprogram your mind, reprogram your reprogram your thinking. The enemy keeps wanting to come and tell you something different. You keep saying the I am. Jesus was constant. He said, I am the way, I am the door, I am the life, I am. Start telling yourself who you really are in present tense. Don't say I'm going to be. Say, I am. Whew, hallelujah. Don't say, I'm going to be. Say, I am. Start telling yourself every day, I am. Whew. 
I am full of joy. No matter how you feel. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Start telling yourself who you are. Present tense. The enemy wants to keep making you think you're not. No, I am. I am who he said I am. I am. That's the instruction. Keisha, that's the instruction. Get bold in your I am. Because the enemy keeps trying to tell you what you're not. Get bold in your I am. Get, I mean, get bold in your I am. Bold. Real bold. I'm serious. Because the attack has been strong. The attack has been strong. And so if, if, if the enemy is going to come at you that strong, you better come at him even stronger. Because he's defeated. We know that. He has no power. We already know that. He can't win. We already know that. He just wants to keep you thinking you're not. Get bold in your I am. Get bold in your I am. Get bold in your I am. Keep speaking. I know you already do it. Keep speaking that I am in her, into her life. I know you do it. Keep doing it. Strong, bold. I am. Get bold in that I am. Something's about to happen. God's about to bless y'all so big. I just see it. I just seen I seen it when y'all came up. And God's about to bless y'all. There's about to be, he's about to open up. And I see it like even within the next 30 days, there's something major God's about to do in y'all's life. That's just about to, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like, whoa, only, only God can do it. <laughs> he, he's about to do about 30 days. It's about to be something open up. And it's massive healing that's taking place. And that healing is going to, that healing is going to um, transfer through children. Massive healing that's about to take place. Because new information is about to be passed. Whew. Somebody put your hands together. I, I was going to say, um, I, and I just have to release this, um, in the area of decisions, um, really be careful of um, decisions that you got to make in the next 30 days. Um, decisions that come from emotions versus the word of God. And where God is wanting to take you to, you guys have to be in agreement. So the decisions that both of you make, is going to really catapult you or it can really like um, impede on your progress. So the thing is, is that just, just be mindful of the decisions and where there's no agreement, make sure that there is agreement and make sure that you guys both agree with the word of God because the thing is the enemy will use emotions, old patterns of thinking to try to stop you. So as you guys come together Make sure that the word of God is in the forefront when you guys come together and make those decisions. Amen? Amen. Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Everybody on your feet, let's stand and let's prepare. Woo! My goodness. Y'all been different at night, church. <laughs> Y'all different. <laughs> I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed by all of you all. Ignite Church, you are all absolutely amazing. And we're we're so blessed to be able to lead and serve with you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Father God, we honor you and we glorify you, Father God. Thank you that you've made us over. You've redeemed all of us. You've caused us to step into this born againness that we need to step into, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that as we walk out of these doors, we are not who came in the door. Woo! Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, when you walk out of here, you ought to reintroduce yourself. <laughs> I'm not the same person that was sitting next to you. I've been, I've been reformed. I've been regenerated. I've been reborn. I've been something different than me. I'm a different person than when I came in here. So, Father God, we thank you, God, that 
that nothing comes against this, Father God, that everything that would try, no weapon form shall be able to prosper. We thank you, Father God, that you cause us to step into the right environments, to make the right decisions, to get in the right places, that cultivate this information that you're giving us, Father God. We declare that we are not the same, we won't be the same, we can't be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go in the joy of the Lord. God bless you. And happy Father's Day again to all the daddies. <laughs> Make sure if you're a dad and you haven't received Father's Day gift that you stop by the host team and they'll make sure to give one for you just in case you didn't get one. Amen. <laughs>